19. Friedrich didn't remember how he arrived at Uncle Gunter's building. By the time he stood in the hallway in front of the apartment, Friedrich's chest ached and he gasped for air. He pounded on the door. When Uncle Gunter opened it, Friedrich plunged into the room. The color drained from Uncle Gunter's face. So they have come already. Friedrich nodded, trying to catch his breath. Uncle Gunter shut the door, ushering Friedrich into the kitchen where they sat. Tell me exactly what they said. The words swam in Friedrich's head, but he tried to repeat them as best he could. Were they wearing the brown shirts of the stormtroopers or the local police uniform? Brown shirts. Uncle Gunter rubbed his forehead. This is worse than we expected. The local guard is more sympathetic. The father said he would be home in a few hours, said Friedrich, standing. I need to go back to the house to wait for him. Uncle Gunter shook his head. No, Friedrich. He will not be back in a few hours. And you can't stay there. They will be back to search. For what? asked Friedrich. Information. Evidence. Anything valuable. If they find books or music that are not approved, they will confiscate and burn them. Friedrich put his hands on his head. This is all my fault. I told Anselm we were leaving to to meet Elizabeth in Berlin. How was I to know she wasn't in Berlin and that she was with the commandant's daughter, Anselm's sister, in Munich? Nephew, none of us could have known. This is not your fault. But right now, we don't have time to debate. We must move quickly and go back and get your things. The familiar and comforting streets of Trossingen suddenly felt dangerous. Were they being watched? Would someone report them? How long until Uncle Gunter might be questioned, too? Once inside the house, Friedrich quickly gathered the photo of father and mother from his dresser, some sheet music, and his cello. He patted his pocket to make sure the harmonica was still there. Uncle Gunter picked up father's cello and grabbed the still-waiting luggage. He turned out all the lights and locked the door. As they hurried away, Friedrich looked back at his house, now a black cavity between the lamp-lit others. Uncle Gunter urged him to walk faster even as they struggled with the instruments and luggage. Fear pressed on Friedrich's chest. What would happen if the Nazis saw them? Would they be mistaken for Jews who hadn't paid their rent? Was this what it was like for Joseph's family when they were forced to leave their home? Would he and father ever return to theirs? Later, as Friedrich lay on the cot Uncle Gunter had set up for him in front of the hearth, he looked around the small two-room apartment, now crowded with his and father's bags and the cellos. He clutched the harmonica to his chest and cried into his pillow. He could have sworn he heard music, the Brahms, first as a child's lullaby, then a mournful lament, and finally a staccato march, accompanied by the ominous sound of jackboots. Was it his imagination or a premonition? Chapter 20 Friedrich passed the weekend in a state of numbness and anxiety. He and Uncle Gunter had hoped Father would be questioned and released the next day or the following. When he wasn't, they mulled the same questions over and over. Was Father being detained in town, or had he been taken far away? Would he be released or held indefinitely? Was he safe? Or early Monday morning before work, Friedrich and Uncle Gunter went to check the house. Friedrich couldn't help but wish they'd find Father sitting in the kitchen sorting sheet music. Mrs. von Gerber was sweeping her front steps when they arrived. She nodded to them. Friedrich, I saw soldiers take your father the other night. Is there any news? Friedrich shook his head. He wished he knew for certain if Mrs. von Gerber was concerned or just fishing for gossip. It's unfortunate that the government thinks Mr. Schmidt, Schmidt is their enemy, said Uncle Gunter. He's just a temperamental musician. He's always been that way, said Mrs. von Gerber, prone to emotional outbursts. Elizabeth is certainly a credit to the family and the new government. She raised her chin toward the Nazi flag in her window. I intend to follow her example. I don't want any trouble. Her eyes darted up and down the street. She gave one final push of her broom and disappeared inside her house. Friedrich gazed at the flag. Mrs. von Gerber? And Uncle Gunter tugged on Friedrich's arm. Do not believe everything you see. Come, let's check inside. When Friedrich and Uncle Gunter reached the door, they noticed the jam was splintered. They exchanged a worried look before they slowly entered. Photographs had hung up on the wall it were askew. Coats and hats lay in a heap on the floor beneath the hall tree. The cuckoo held court unscathed. Maybe it isn't so bad, said Friedrich. 
Uncle Gunter stood in the doorway to the parlor, his face telling another story. Friedrich stepped forward and his eyes widened. The room was in shambles. Furniture had been tipped. Old cello bows had been cracked in half. Sheet music was scattered. Books lay strewn on the floor. Only Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler was left standing face out on a shelf. Friedrich and Uncle Gunter walked through the house. Every room had been searched and turned upside down. Every drawer and closet had been pillaged. Except Elizabeth's room. The poster of the Nazi girl and boy in their uniforms had been left untouched. Friedrich, I want you to go on to work. Tell Ernst I wasn't feeling well, but we'll be back tomorrow. Say nothing about the break-in. Do you understand? I want to stay with you, said Friedrich. Uncle Gunter shook his head. I'm going to get answers if I can, but in secret. I have a friend I can trust who works with the local police. He owes me a favor. I'll ask him to inquire at the commandant's headquarters on our behalf. I need you to go to the factory and act as if all is well. I'll meet you at home tonight. News of father's arrest had traveled fast. When Friedrich walked into the factory floor, he felt more self-conscious than he ever had from his birthmark. It seemed everyone's eyes searched him out, eyes full of worry or piercing gazes of superiority that said father should have known better, and the all-too-familiar looks of pity that were, at this time, for something other than his face. He kept his head down, hurried to his station, and set to work. When Ernst made his rounds, Friedrich told him that Uncle Gunter wasn't feeling well, but would be back tomorrow. Ernst nodded. I was deeply sorry, Friedrich, to hear about Martin. His face, his voice was so sincere that Friedrich couldn't look up for fear he'd cry. When Ansem came by to deliver harmonicas, he was as puffed up as a rooster. Guess you'll think twice the next time you turn me down for a meeting, right, Friedrich? Friedrich refused to meet his gaze and kept working. Ansem leaned in. There's another youth rally next month for winter solstice. You'll come with me this, this time. We don't want the same thing to happen to your uncle that happened to your father. Do we, Friedrich? He sauntered away, whistling. Ansem's threat burned inside of him. Friedrich gritted his teeth to keep from saying anything he'd regret.